what's up welcome back to another video and today I've decided to do a profile tutorial like a YouTube profile avatar tutorial thingy whatever um I can't tell if you guys can notice but I've been really sick today and I've been in bed for like 12 hours so I might not sound my best but I don't know anyways um, ignore my quite ignorant wallpaper uh, let's just get right into it. So the things that you'll need today are uh, GIMP, which is pretty much like a free version of Photoshop, I guess. I might also get uh, or do a tutorial for Photoshop, which obviously will be more in-depth and you'll have a better product. But right now we're just working with this. It's free. Uh, uh, GIMP. Is that a thing? It's GIMP.org. Okay. Right, yeah. GIMP.org, you could just press the big red download button. <laughs> Apparently, we're celebrating 20 years. Here we go. Cool. Okay, anyways. This is a good idea. Uh, you also need to go to defont.com if you want to download any of the fonts you see me use in this video. So let's get right into this. Okay, so you open up GIMP, right? Then you could do either File, New, or I just do Control N. Uh, first of all, make sure that your width is 12 8, not 12 80, 1000, and your height is also 1000 because you want a nice square. And then if you go into advanced options, make sure that your fill width is transparency. And you just hit OK, and you have this little transparent square. Now, what you also want to do is um, whatever sort of like main types of videos you'll do on your channel, you might like Google the wallpaper for that. So, like, obviously, on my channel, I do a lot of Terraria, so I can do Terraria bit, wall bit, bit wallpaper and then go with all these different options but I stick with CSGO wallpaper and I've already decided I'm gonna go with this one was it this one I think it was this one and you can all, 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 bleh, always remember to look through these little like related images because sometimes you'll find a better image than the one that you originally choose is that that one mm, I, I still like this one and it's a good 1920 by 1080, which is 1080p. So you can just go right click, save image as. Figure out where to save it to our desktop. That's a long name, let's just call it CSGO Wallpaper. Now it's saved, that was pretty fast. Alright, so let's close that. Let's open up File Explorer, whatever it's called. And you can just drag that image into GIMP, and then it'll load in like that. It might take a second because it's a pretty big file size. And there you go. So in order to zoom out, you could either hold control and uh, just scroll up on the mouse wheel or just press minus or plus. That's what I, I use minus or plus. I actually just learned about the control thing. But I just like plus and minus because it's like tactile, I don't know. So, so if I ever learn how to speak English, I can continue. So if you're happy with whatever it just pops in with, then good for you. But in my case, my image is pretty big. So I could uh, just click right up here on the scale tool or shift T. Just click as long as you have that layer selected up in the top right there. Uh, click that little chain right next to your height and width just so that it'll all just move with the aspect ratio instead of going all like that. Reset the chain, make it a little bit smaller. Just make that height a thousand. That'd be the max height for our image. There we go. It's not really that huge of a difference. There we go. So now this is the max size we can get. So we just move the image around to some part that we think would look cool, and then where is it? Right over here, it, it might not be in this exact order, but it looks like this little white rectangle with four black arrows coming out of each side. Click on that to see the alignment tool. Click on the image on the screen and just hit the like line with the arrows pointing down on it, like down and up, and that will center it vertically. We don't want to click that one because then that will center the image completely, but we don't want that. So now you got this. And this is totally cool if you're just, this is your picture then good for you but we're not going to stop there we're going to add a new layer 
and just make sure it's all that stuff, transparency, same with the height. Make sure it's above your image there, and you could click the fill tool and then choose our foreground color to be like the color of the same theme color as our channel pretty much. And then just click and then boom, you filled that entire layer with blue. Oh yeah, I haven't selected anything. Alright. So now we could just uh, move around the opacity right there to make it look sort of good and like blend with the background image. Or under mode, we could select there is a grain merge, which I think looks a lot cooler. It sort of, I mean, merges the colors, I guess. And then you could still mess around with the colors, sort of give it like a tint, I guess. I don't want it to be super obvious. And then now we could just merge down so now these two layers are just one image instead of the blue layer and the other wallpaper thing and then you could just keep going from here and put your text down but what we're gonna do is sort of blur the background a little bit so we're gonna click on that layer go to filters click blur and then click gaussian blur or gaussian blur or whatever and then just sort of oh we can't zoom out in preview just sort of look around the preview like See when I'm moving it around a little bit, you can see what it would regularly look like, and then when I stop moving it, it gets a little blurry. So we might want to put it to maybe like 15, if that looks good. And then if you want to add more blur, you could always just uh, press control or hold control and press F, and it would just keep applying that blur. So it'd blur that, it'd keep blurring it by 15. So once I've come up with a blur that I kind of like, then I could also... Um, where's it? Click on that layer, go to colors, uh, brightness and contrast, and then I think I kind of want to drop the brightness a little bit. Maybe just like mess around with the rest of this stuff just a bit. So now I've just made it a little bit darker to sort of add some contrast between this and our text layer. Speaking of text layer, let's add that right now. So just click the big bold A, click anywhere on the screen really, and then just like if your name is super short, then you could do it like if your name is ABC, then let's just up this, then you could just do ABC. But if your name is something really long, then you could just put the first letter of it, and then for some reason it always defaults back to 18 font size. So my name is obviously Miori, so we're gonna make an M, maybe make it a little bit bigger. So for this, I found that like 710 is usually good. And I'll just click the alignment tool, click anywhere on the M, and this time we'll click both of the different like arrows there, just the two down the center right there, and then this will perfectly align it in the center of our image. And we could go and change the font to something. I can't remember what's exactly called. It's called like there you go. It's called Brown Fox. I haven't actually used this font. I don't know. So I actually just saw something that I'm gonna try out. If you go to the pencil tool, make sure that we have a good hardness. Make sure it's the same color as our text. Uh, it's, I keep using control and the um, plus or minus like Photoshop, but I'm gonna go in and add to this. I'm just, I'm just gonna fill it in because I like the shape of the M, but I'm not 100% sure if I like just how sort of rough it looks. So I'm gonna go and fill the majority of that stuff in, even though I have a really shaky hand. I'm just gonna go and sort of just make it not look as rough if I can. Let's just move around. This is where it really needs some help. So maybe we could do sort of that. Yep. Yeah. And then just control Z if you ever mess anything up. So there we go, pretty much filled all this stuff in. If you're gonna mess around with some of this stuff up there, eh. all right, that looks okay. Maybe we could keep doing control. Maybe we could go to the eraser tool. Oh, and by the way, if you don't want to go all the way over here and mess around with your brush size, you could use the um, closed brackets. Are they called closed brackets? Whatever. They're usually like by in between the P and the enter keys. They're like the rectangle parentheses so we're just gonna go and sort of make like a little curve right there maybe Ooh, let's not do that 
Let's just click there. Hold shift to make a straight line. I missed. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Now we're gonna zoom out. That looks a lot better. It's just all solid. And then I'm gonna make sure that's still centered because I don't know if any of it got off centered. But yeah, it did. Okay, so now it's centered again. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to right click, go to alpha two selection. Hold up. Did we not fill in those spots there? Hold on. What, what, what's the control shift or control shift A? Oh, apparently we didn't fill in little spots like right there. Okay, so now it's alpha to selection. Uh, we still. Okay, now we should have all of it filled in. There we go, beautiful. And we're going to open a new layer, make sure it's all the same stuff, and go to select, grow, you grow by 30, and then. If you want just basic black and white again, you can just click that little black and white rec or squares right under there, and then you've got your basic colors again. And then in layer, you just make sure you have fill and just click. And then it'll basically fill the entire thing in with black. But it's obviously a new layer, so it's... If you... Come on. Okay, so to move layers, you could use these little... Or just click on the layer that you want to move and use these little green arrows down there to move it around. So you see that now by having this little black there, we have created a sort of border, but we're not just done there. We're gonna click on that black layer, we're gonna go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur again. Sort of like move towards the edges and maybe choose Gaussian blur, like the horizontal and vertical by 20, then just hit okay. Maybe we'll just control Z that and just up it by a lot more. Maybe a good 40, that's 50. Let's, let's try 50. Let's see what 50 looks like. You can always just control Z if you don't like something. I think that that actually looks kind of okay. But I think that those solid colors look a little bland. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna alpha to selection again, just our, um, the blue M. I'm going to go to the little gradient tool right there. The blend tool, whatever. It's between the paintbrush, or the bucket and the pencil. I'm going to select two different colors. I can't remember which order it is. I'm going to select a brighter color than a darker color. And then just as long as I have that still, the area still selected, I'm going to hold click on one area, hold control to make it a straight line, and then just drag up to the top. That doesn't look right. Okay, so I'm going to make that darker color even darker. I already have just a bunch of different preset colors in there. So let's see if we can do that again. Make this brighter maybe? Is that the problem? You have to make that brighter and this darker? Ooh, boy. I think I figured out what the problem is. Whatever. That looks okay. And I actually just thought of another thing, but I'm not 100% sure how to do it. Uh, it's not that, is it? No, it's not. Okay, hold on. If you go like that, and then go like that. That. Hold on. Now I think if we go like that, and then make a new layer, right? And we still have that selected area down there, so we're going to go and fill that with a white. No, a dark, like a, a black, probably. Just go fill in that selection down there. Make sure you have a new layer, by the way. And then we're going to grain merge. That didn't do anything. And just lower the uh, opacity, like really, like way low. Maybe that's good. <laughs> like 9.3, maybe 10. There we go. So now it just sort of adds some color variation and if you really want to get into it you could go back on the internet and search just texture or images obviously and let's just choose this one it's a like HD just save it call it texture that's how you spell texture don't argue with me <laughs> open up our file thingy again there we go and then if we click on that M, even though you can't see it, or you could just click the little eye next to the texture to make it just invisible. 
If you right click on that M again, go to alpha to selection, then click back on that texture. And then if you right click in the middle of that selection that you can still see back there, go to select and then invert. Then you've selected everything but that M. And then if you just press delete, if you right click on that image, go out, add alpha channel and then press delete, then you've deleted everything but the M. So then if you just deselect everything, that looks actually pretty cool by itself. But what I think we're gonna do is, wait, if we move that below, there we go, okay. So maybe if we grain merge, that looks better. And then lower the opacity just a bit, but not that much. That actually looks pretty cool. So obviously this might not be the best font, I'm not realizing, because it's not very distinctively an M. But you could choose whatever font you want. Obviously go to the font. There's a million and a half fonts to work with. There's 125 pages of new fonts. And you obviously got A to Z of all the fonts. There's a million and a half fonts. I don't think you'll ever run out. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just go on here, just scroll through random pages of fonts and see if there's any that I like. That's, what the uh, heck? Longshot, by the way, that's a really nice font. That's what I actually used for my current profile picture and banner. Shout out. They have a World Cup font, which is kind of weird. Anyways, so once you've created an image that you like, you can go to File, Export As. Don't save as, you gotta export as, or Control Shift E. Make sure you save it to your desktop, probably. And name it whatever, you can call it my new awesome banner. I don't think you can do smart faces. <laughs> And then just make sure this is all export images. Make sure it's a .png or a .jpg. I prefer PNGs just because they're easier to edit. Make sure you hit export. Uh, don't really mess with any of this stuff. I don't know what it does. You might, you might be a wizard. Just hit export. Wait for this little bar to fill up with some green. And then you can close it. Don't worry about saying discard. It'll just, basically when you discard it, gets rid of all the different layers and just makes it all one so you can't edit the individual layers anymore but as long as you're happy you can just close it hit this card and then you're good so yeah if you guys did enjoy this tutorial i want to see more of them like this possibly on photoshop or maybe video editing tutorials whatever i got loads of different programs down here because i just wanted to try them all out so leave a like if you enjoy tutorials and want to see more of them, obviously comment down which type you want. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace! Hold up.